Strange though it may sound, I wasn't able to come up with something shorter or, or catchier for this title. It's just kind of like a literal description of what we're going to talk about. Uh, it's a pretty simple technique, uh, one that can help to cut down your draw calls quite a bit. Uh, I have found that working on games in the past, that tends to be a bottleneck near the end of the project. You know, people are freaking out because there's too many draw calls and you somehow have to reduce them. And this is one way of doing that. So yeah, I'll do a brief explanation and then we'll dive in and, and show the practicalities of it. So the super simple example we're going to go with for this demo is just, um, here's a mesh with two materials assigned to it. We've got the red part and the green part. And typically, uh, this would be two draw calls inside of Unreal Engine 4. And here inside of Unreal Engine 4, you can see uh, I've imported that mesh. And sure enough, there's two materials assigned to it. And you can see over here, there's, um, there's two elements and each element represents one draw call. So each instance of this mesh is two draw calls. Now I'm going to show you an easy way to combine that into one. Now normally with a mesh like this with two materials assigned to it, you have uh, all the UV islands for each material set up so they're overlapping within the zero to one space because you know that's just the way you pack it and it doesn't matter because they're separate materials. So here you can see the red is overlapping with the green. Now the basis of this optimization technique is that you take one of the materials, or rather, um, I should say you take each unique material and offset it vertically on the V axis uh, of the UV. So, so the green will be up in the zero to one space and the red will be down in the one to two space. You know, if I had a third material that would be down in the two to three and the three to four, you could just stack them as far as you want to go, but we'll keep it simple for this example. So uh, visually what that means is I grab the red elements and I drag them down one whole UV cell or, you know, or, or uh, whatever it's actually called. I'm not sure, but you can see they have their own space now within the V axis. And we'll see how to leverage that uh, inside the shader here in a second. Okay, and back inside of UE4. Now on the left, I have the original mesh still that has the two elements, so it's two draw calls. And you can see on the right now, I've got a second version of that mesh with one element, so it's one draw call, but it still looks the same as the original one. So why is that? Well, there's a pretty simple shader trick going on. Now if I open up the shader, uh, this is really all there is to it. Now to walk through this slowly, is that big enough? Yeah, okay. Uh, all we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, uh, what is the V, uh, what is the V texture coordinate for this pixel that I'm drawing? Uh, is it uh, between zero and one, uh, then use material A. Uh, is it bigger than one, uh, then use material B. That's it. So you can see here, I'm taking the texture coordinate I'm using a component mask to mask out the G channel, which, you know, in this case, you have to use your imagination. Uh, U and V are mapped to R and G when it comes to this sort of uh, terminology. So G is V. So we mask out V and it pipes into this if, uh, this if statement right here. And the if statement just compares that with one. And it says, oh, are you greater than or equal to one? Then use red. Are you less than? one um, then use green and that tells this thing how to render out so for a little bit of added complexity uh, in your shader you end up with a single draw call using multiple materials and you can see where that's a huge advantage let's say this was some sort of a, um, a pillar that got repeated say a thousand times in the level well with this simple little twist to the shader you just saved a thousand draw calls so it really does add up. Now, admittedly, um, if you have four or five materials assigned to a mesh, this might get a little hairy. You know, your shader network's gonna get big and there's gonna be a bunch of branches. And yet, you know, and realistically, you're gonna have to do this for you know, the base color, uh, the roughness, the metal, the normal, and, and every other input that you're using is gonna have to have the same sort of if setup on it. But that's the price of admission, right? So it's, uh, like with all optimization techniques, you need to measure and see if it's worth it for your project or not. But 
uh, one of the reasons I do like this technique is because you get to attack the optimization from two ends, right? Because you're reducing your draw calls, which is great. And since you're not changing your your texture load on the video card, because the same textures have to be uploaded regardless of uh, whether you're using multiple draw calls or not, um, you can also attack the uh, resolution of the textures and try to lower those down if you can, like MIP those down. So less draw calls, and you can try to MIP down the textures that don't really matter. And you can get some, you know, some pretty easy wins using this sort of technique. So try it out, see if you like it, and hopefully you can get some gains out of it.